good happy thursday morning thursday july 7 2022 i'm riley king and welcome to your morning news update right here on the riley king radio network let's get started right now first up man accused of stabbing woman leaving her with life-threatening injuries Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. What does it take to be the best? It takes guts. 43-year-old Brandon Fecto of Farmington is once again accused of brutally attacking another woman. Early yesterday morning, Northwood police say he stabbed a woman he knows at the Lakeshore Farm Inn. Court paperwork says she was stabbed three times in the abdomen before being rushed to Concord Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Seven years ago, this was Fecto in court, asking a judge to reduce his prison sentence, which was denied. He was serving a 16 and a half year sentence after he attacked his former girlfriend in 2004 and abandoned her in the woods in Rochester. This was his apology in 2015 to his victim. I'm so, so sorry that you and your family went through that. I pray that you find peace from this. I only ask and hope that you can someday, someday forgive me. Tonight, Fecto is charged with first-degree assault with a deadly weapon for the incident in Northwood. The affidavit says the victim identified Fecto to hospital staff as the person who attacked her and that a witness saw a person speed off from the hotel with the headlights off. Fecto was arrested last night, less than 24 hours after the stabbing. Fecto is being held tonight on preventative detention. He will be in court at a later date. Reporting live in Northwood tonight, Mike Cronin, WMUR News. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire schools now able to apply for a grant to bolster school security. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. What does it take to be the best? It takes guts. I think Uvalde really sort of reignited the conversation again about school safety. School is supposed to be one of the safest places for students. And New Hampshire is making sure that's the case. The timing of this grant is actually very, very good. Mike Fournier is the Bedford School District Superintendent. He says they've been focusing on school safety for the last decade. But this grant will help boost that effort at the high school. Being able to get um, uh, th this grant written up and sent out to the state, hopefully for approval, is going to help us get things in place for this fall. The maximum amount one school can get is $100,000, and the money will be awarded based on three security risks and safety priorities, surveillance, access control, and emergency alerting. We've already scored $13.3 million, and we're still, we have a request into the federal government about the use of certain funds to see if we can expand that by some additional funds as well. And for some schools, they need this grant because during the pandemic, school safety was not as top of mind. We did a lot of things that we don't usually do pre-pandemic when it came to safety. Um, we're getting back into that mode. Ford mentioned that a lot of it has to do with the culture, but with this grant's help, it'll definitely change the physical aspects of security. We need to make sure all that those new staff are up to speed. Uh, those are critical for us and things we need to do at the beginning of the school year. Now, there are two different time periods to apply. The early decision phase will end on July 22nd, and it has $3.3 million for public schools. However, the second phase can be for schools that didn't receive awards or didn't apply in time. The deadline to apply for phase two is August 26th, which has $10 million for both public and non-public schools. And if you want to know where to apply or what schools in the past have done with this kind of grant, you can enter our website or our mobile app. Live in studio, Troy Lynch, WMUR News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Lanes closed on I-95 in Northampton after car fire officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Bad decisions in Washington drove our cars, appliances, computers overseas. 
Now Congress is considering legislation that could drive American pharmaceuticals abroad too. So call your members of Congress and tell them to oppose government price setting. And we begin with breaking news. A car fire on 95 North just past the Hampton Tolls. Three lanes headed north and one headed south are now blocked. You can see the smoke there that this fire is putting out. This image is from a state DOT camera, and that is making quite a mess of traffic in the area. Both directions backed up for a good mile right now. If you can, avoid that area, and we'll keep you posted on this. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Firefighters injured during a fire in Woodstock. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. What does it take to be the best? It takes guts. Well, right now, a firefighter from the Camden Thornton Fire Department is recovering after getting hurt at a fire in Woodstock. The firefighter was working outside the home on Lady Slipper Road in full protective gear when a smoldering beam fell on them. They were taken to the hospital with a minor shoulder injury, a small burn, and a concussion. The firefighter is expected to return to full duty in a few days. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Five new deaths related to COVID-19 reported by New Hampshire health officials. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Bad decisions in Washington drove our cars, appliances, computers overseas. Now Congress is considering legislation that could drive American pharmaceuticals abroad too. So call your members of Congress and tell them to oppose government price setting. The latest on COVID-19 in New Hampshire. The state announcing 169 new cases today. COVID positive hospitalizations are down to 78 with 14 of them receiving COVID specific treatment. There are sadly five new deaths to report tonight, bringing that total close to nearly 2,600. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That did it for your morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.